Hey guys, welcome. In today's video, we'll be reviewing the 2020 Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza ZDI Plus AMT, or in short, the diesel automatic Vitara Brezza. So, starting with the design of the car, you get the big bold Suzuki logo along with the chrome grille. The air dam is shaped quite well, and you get fog lamps and you indicators above that. Talking about the headlights, so the headlights are a bit small on this car, and you get a dual beam projector setup along with uh, L shaped LEDs. Moving to the side profile, so Maruti has done an excellent job in designing this compact SUV. It's boxy but it has the presence of an SUV or at least the stance of an SUV from the side. You get black cladding which goes around the bottom of the, of the car along with black wheels and you also get black elements on the A pillar, B pillar and the C pillar which gives a floating roof design. The wheels are 205-60R16 and they do fill up the wheel arches quite well. Moving to the rear of the car, please excuse my friend. You get your simple tail lights, you get Vitara Brezza embossed and big chrome over there. You also get a rear wiper assembly along with the high moon stop light. You also get a somewhat integrated spoiler along with silver roof frames which are not functional. Let's quickly open the boot and looks like the car is locked. So with the magic of editing, the boot opens now. Yeah, so there you have it, you have 328 liters of space and the boot is yet quite well. The loading lip however is a bit high so that may be a bit of an issue for loading in heavy luggage. Let's now quickly check out the engine bay of this car. And there you have it, the beautiful 1.3 litre DDIS motor which is quite noisy. But this settles down while driving. You also get insulation, so inside the cabin it's quite comfortable and refined inside. Let's now quickly check out the interior of this car, so getting inside. Yeah, so this actually has an all black cabin which kind of suits the white exterior but can feel a little bit claustrophobic also. So seats are comfortable, you get a lot of space inside, the window area is also large, you get adjustable headrest, you get an armrest. You do not however get AC even, so here it's quite a big of an emission. The door pockets are also decently sized. And overall for a Maruti it does feel quite well built actually. And space is also not too bad, you get scooped out seat bags with a magazine holder as well. And the dashboard in front does look quite nice, so quick, let's quickly check out the front of the car. Yes, so getting into the front of the Maruti Brezza. So you are greeted with the Maruti steering wheel which has steering motor controls also. You also get the Suzuki logo. Now check here the instrument cluster of this car. It does look quite nice actually. You get squarish and circleish kind of instrument clusters with your tachometer, speedometer and your multi infrared display. You get a cross for safety. You also get a touchscreen system, your AGS lever, handbrake. You also get a small storage compartment in the center. Seats are actually quite, quite comfortable on this car and that's a positive point. You also get a kind of textured finish on the dashboard which also houses dual glove boxes. Horn sounds good. And you also get your internally adjustable mirrors and you get your door unlock unlock button, your window switches. You also get a button for closing in and opening your rear mirrors which is quite good actually. So that's the interior in general. Let's now get driving. Alright guys, so driving the Vitara Brezza. The first thing you notice when you start driving as with all modern cars, is how light the steering wheel is. The steering wheel really is very light and this makes driving in the city very easy. Another thing you notice is how slow this AMT gearbox is. I mean this gearbox is so slow that in the time it takes it to shift gears, I am sure even force motors can sell two force Gurkhas in that time. That's how slow it is. Shifting the car to manual mode does make things better, but there is still that AMT lag whenever it shifts gears. To put it into perspective, when the car is in automatic mode, it takes 14.5 seconds to go from 0 to 100 and my 15 year old icon can do it in 14 seconds. That shows how well this gearbox does performance on this brilliant DDIS motor. Moving on to the engine in this car. So the engine in this car is the India's most famous diesel engine, the DDIS motor with 90 bhp and 200 mm of torque. This engine has powered almost every single Maruti upwards of the Swift in either 75 bhp or 90 bhp forms. So the engine in this car, I mean everybody knows about this engine, it's a beautiful engine, it has a little bit of turbo lag below 2000 rpm, but above 2000 rpm the engine performs flawlessly and redlines all the way up to 5300 rpm. Beyond 3500 rpm however, the engine does get quite vocal and noisy and progress also gets quite slow. It's really the happiest between 2000 and 3500 rpm. That's where the motor is in the sweet spot. In this vehicle too, the motor is an absolute joy. But combined with the AMT gearbox, performance is quite dull. So the 0 to 100 sprint like I told you in automatic is 4.5 seconds, but in manual mode you can get it up to 13 seconds with a good launch. The ride comfort on this car however, is not very good. 
This is because the car is set up quite stiff, which means hitting potholes and bumps at reasonable speeds would cause all your occupants to get jolted and tossed around. That's one downside with this car. This does improve when you go faster, but that underlying stiffness is always there and occupants never feel very comfortable in this car. This is probably due to the stiff suspension and compact wheelbase. Talking about handling. So handling department is quite good with this car. I mean it's a neutral handler, but the steering does not offer a lot of feel and feedback and it does quite feel quite vague in the center air position. Also while taking turns due to its high center of gravity, you don't feel very confident in that. But the high center of gravity has a good advantage too and that's its visibility. The car does give you a very commanding driving position and visibility all around is excellent. You can really see all the corners of the car properly and you can exactly judge when people come too close or if you really want to go close and scare somebody also. Alright guys, that should be enough of city driving. Time to get on the highway and see what this vehicle is all about. So driving the Vitara Presa diesel on the highway. Well, the first thing you notice like I already mentioned is how eager this engine is to redline. And this gearbox really does let this engine down in that aspect. The shifts are quite slow in manual mode also. And as an enthusiast, you will feel that quite bothersome. Drive this vehicle calmly and peacefully though, and this AMD gearbox is perfect. It shifts quite smoothly, and manual mode also, it does give you what you want. One good thing about this gearbox though, in manual mode, is it does an auto rev match downshift every time you downshift. So this means the power is exactly where you want it, when you need it. This is one good thing about this AMD gearbox. Other than that, this vehicle is quite average to drive on the highway. Stability is good up to about 120 or 130, but beyond that you will feel the steering go light and the vehicle start to get unnerving and does not very confidence inspiring at all. Another thing you notice being a compact SUV is the horn is quite meek. I mean this is quite a meek horn for a compact SUV and this being a compact SUV means okay the brakes are quite good as a taxi driver made me experiment with and that's another thing with this compact SUV, the looks. While it does look good in city traffic, out on the highway, it does not have the boostness of an SUV and people will tend to mistake you for being a hatchback and try to take the upper hand especially when it comes to road rage. So you, that's one thing you do need to be careful about. This taxi driver later got overtaken by me so that's not an issue but this is something you do need to be aware about if you think a compact SUV will give you the same road presence or proper SUV. So that's it guys, I mean this kind of sums up my review of the Vitara Brezza, I mean it's quite a good car to drive for the city traffic, but out on the highway, especially in this AMD form, you will not get the driver enjoyment or pleasure as a manual Brezza would give you. And that brings me to the Maruti Brezza in general, because this car is not available with the 1.3 DDIS motor anymore. Thanks to BS6 emission norms, all diesel cars in the Maruti stable have been kicked off and you get only the 1.5 litre petrol in most of the models as well as the 1.2k series for other models. So the 1.5 litre engine I mean I have not driven it personally but it is quite a good smooth engine for city driving. But being an naturally aspirated engine you will not have the turbo kick that this engine gives you and that vehicle does not come with the AMT but comes with a torque converter automatic and that will sap even more power and mileage and that is one thing you do need to be careful about. So if you guys want me to review the petrol Preza please leave a like and comment in the comment section below and I'll try to get my hands on that. So until then, this is JRS Car signing off. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.